Hello there. It's time. I love making things stupidly historical, but for all of my historical nerdery, I have yet to tackle the big boy. The Black Ice mod for Hearts of Iron 4 is considered the ultimate historical nightmare, with way too much equipment variety, logistical organization, and whatever this is. I set a stupid, unattainable goal of hitting 32,000 subscribers by April 1st, my age, by my birthday, to be punished by playing Black Ice using only historical divisions and organizations. And uh, yeah, here we are. So it's time to suffer. If you like these kind of historical challenges, I've set myself my next impossible goal. If I hit 50,000 subscribers by August, my wife's birthday, I'll be giving her the present of my personal agony. I'll be trying every single of the very stupidest and impossible historical challenges that have been given to me in the comments in one mega video. So if you want to see Luxembourg done historical and playing as a railway, subscribe and like the video. So here we are, Black Ice. There is actually a Black Ice is Life difficulty mode. It says that winning would make Panzer Brew proud. But seeing as how I am literally recording this on my birthday, I am not doing that. No way. Not unless I get really good at this. Oh god, there's so much here. Industries, food, power. Oh my god, I happen to play Black Ice when they just reformed the economy. <laughs> Alright, Germany, here we go. You'll notice that all the divisions have weird symbols under them, and that's because Black Ice insists that you use the NATO symbols instead of the little funny helmets that Base Hoy does. Well, I turned them off so that we can see the regular symbols in the Division Designer, because this is all about historical divisions, and I'm assuming most people have not learnt by heart the NATO symbols. Even though I've turned it off, all the divisions on the map, just for me, stay NATO symbols no matter what I do. And when I asked in the Black Ice Discord how to turn this off, this was the response. So, uh, yeah. Guess we're looking at NATO symbols. Don't worry though, the divisions do at least have the right symbols, and boy howdy, are there a lot of support companies and granularity to this. We'll look more at this in 1939 when it's time to make our divisions, but oh god, this is going to be intense. Alongside that, we also have to think about how on earth we're going to build all the equipment, because Black Eyes has a lot. It's got infantry equipment, yes, but it's also got their clothes, and their horse transport, and three other kinds of transport trucks, and tanks, and four different kinds of artillery. It's unending. The of things I need to build. I'm a complete newbie at this mod, but I think I'm going to be investing relatively early into civs and infrastructure and swap over to mills at like mid-1937 or something. And oh, the focus tree. The focus tree is so big. I'll be going a pretty historical route trying to do Rhineland and just focus on eco as best I can, but it's going to be a real trick trying to figure everything out. Black Ice is really interesting in that not only is there so much to research, but you are also limited what you can research based on each slot. This one can only do tanks, this one can only do infantry stuff for example. This means you really have to time your slots properly, or you'll find yourself behind on tech. You also need to think about your, your foundries making steel, aluminium, and committing power and resources to them. It's just constant juggling act that I just know I'm gonna mess up. But that's okay, I'm being historical, and Germany was not great at it, so hey, I'm only being accurate. There are also tons of designs that come pre-made with this mod. You don't actually have access to the tank and plane designer. You just get the pre-built ones. Oh my god, there is so much text in the events. There's so much to read. <laughs> it is not a good sign that we are already running out of fuel and I'm not even doing anything. I think I need to build some more refineries. I should also be building as many divisions as I can. I've got these weird half-motorized divisions. They're, they're semi-motorized. They're slightly faster than infantry. I, I don't understand it. We're going to have to, to figure this out. Wow, just trying to recruit some basic infantry divisions cost me so much equipment, but especially uniforms. I have to build so many clothes. God, can't these guys bring something from home? I have so much to spend my PP on. I just don't know what to pick. Maybe I'll just be historical and put Dame Le Benz as the tank designer because they did indeed make the tanks. I'm not sure. There's so much to pick. Something else I have to keep in mind is that Doctrine is back to being researched like it was in really old Hoy, but there's so many different kinds of Doctrine on my mobile warfare and I also have different kinds of like defense. I, I don't know which one to pick or which one would really technically be the historical one. I feel like elastic defense makes sense for counterattack purposes. Okay, I finally researched the Panzer II, so now we can replace the weird Panzer ones that I'm building with it. Okay, the research has actually only given me the little design template. God, look at all those options. It is going to be near impossible for me to do this manually, but thankfully the lovely mod creators have already done all the hard work for me. Here is the historical tank divisions. You just spend a little bit of XP and you can buy it, and then you you get the design. This is the Panzer 2A. It seems really accurate. Look at that, it's got the 2 centimeter cannon, the coaxial 7.92 MG34. 
Honestly, this is perfect. I think all the tank designs are going to be like this. There was so much work put into this. Well, th this makes my life a little bit easier. I'm just going to check for any mistakes, but I think the designs are pretty much accurate. I'm going to try to send some boys over the Spanish Civil War, but I actually need to do some focuses first before I'm actually allowed to, including Condor Legion. And I actually get some tech bonuses once I get further down the line, which I'm going to need because there's so many techs. God, look, look at this. Look how many different tank techs there are. The Panzer three and the four and <laughs> so much to deal with. Let's just send some boys down over to Spain, a couple of Panzer Divisions, get some XP, though I only really need my XP to change up my division designs, I don't need them for Doctrines in this mod. I also don't have any specific designs for the 1936 Tank Division, I think this one is pretty accurate, we'll look at this more so once we get over to 1939, but I think this is this is right, including the Motorcycle Battalion. There's just so much detail for this mod, the Spanish Civil War has stuff I can help them with with command power, I get Goering's four-year plan to get some construction speed bonuses, I think this comes back every year. God, there's just so much to deal with. And here are the Panzer three and fours. Let's just buy their designs. Look at this. They got the cupola. They've got the right guns. These are so beautiful. These are actually classified as being different tanks. The Panzer three is a medium tank and the Panzer four is a medium CS tank. I think it's like an infantry tank. Now at least I'm finally building some military factories. I guess it's basically just a dance of uniforms and guns and tanks and planes. Oh, I can't forget planes. There's so much stuff to build. I am already getting massively confused from all the different plane techs and needing to stay up to date. I need to be careful not to ruin too much production efficiency from constantly swapping, but there's just so much research. At least it's very clear what doctrine I'm supposed to go down with mobile warfare. They keeps giving me little bonuses, including ahead of time bonuses, so I can get armored spearhead. But the stats are not that amazing. It feels like base game doctrines are way more powerful. All right, I don't know what I'm doing wrong, but I've been really struggling to get units out so as to be able to do the Angelus focus early. So I can only do Angelus now because it's the historical day for Angelus. I know I should have done it earlier to get all the equipment but I just I just couldn't get enough divisions out so let's Angelus and figure out why I'm not making enough clothes oh wow getting Angelus actually gives me a research slot that's pretty cool and a whole bunch of stuff some refineries okay yeah that that was very good I probably should have got that much earlier I think rushing that would have been smart I've just researched handheld AT which is meant to represent like the anti-tank rifles so I would like to be able to put that in my divisions but I don't quite understand how I make them use it. Oh, get the possibility to introduce it via the production tab. Okay, there it is. Oh, look at that. Okay, so I can decide who I want to assign it to. Infantry battalions or... Oh, ah, I didn't mean to click that. Okay, well, I just wanted to see what happened, but I guess all of my infantry battalions now are supposed to have handheld AT. Is there a way to take this back? Nope, there isn't. Okay, I guess all of my divisions in the entirety of my army are going to be under-equipped. Oh my god, there's the Waffen SS division builder. There's so many, like, divisions you can get that give you SS divisions? What is this? There's so much detail. Okay, I've made some divisions. They're useless. What? What is this? They're just like one or two battalions. What is the purpose of these? I also need to think about building submarines because even though there are preset ship designs for capital ships, there are none for subs, which is weird, but it's okay. I, I know the, sh the sub of this time, it had five 53.3 centimeter tubes and I know it's engine horsepower, so I'll just build that and this will be a useful little submarine. Maybe I can try to choke Britain off. Right, the exact same thing is happening with the Sudenton land. I just wasn't able to get enough divisions in time, so the only reason I can do it is because of the date. But here we go, we're going to reclaim the Sudenton land and we can also start to assign other types of equipment to new guys like radio equipment to infantry battalions this time i'm only going to assign it to like mobile battalions i don't have enough okay i don't have enough but we can demand the sedentin land we don't get much but more will come later when we finish annexing the checks right it is now january 1939 which means it's time to talk about our divisions we have a whole bunch of different types of division designs but i only really care about these top three the infantry the tanks and the motorized but before we get to the division designs, a quick story with an important lesson. Man, I really hope you've seen Masters of the Air. Oh, 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 that was a close one. Here I am, an American bomber pilot. Just got shot down after a peaceful bombing run over Munster, a raid that was definitely not targeted on the city center whatsoever. Whew. It's okay though. All I gotta do is stay stealthy to avoid. Halt! Schweiner! An Americana! Americana! Oh. Remember your training. Was ist los? What is an Americana? Scheiße. 
It's another one, yeah? Another one? Was? Is that damn link in the description. The allies are using NordVPN to change the location and protect their identities, yeah? NordVPN? NordVPN. NordVPN. NordVPN works to protect your privacy online by encrypting your internet browsing and keeping you safe from online threats and surveillance. From protecting you from man-in-the-middle attacks and phishing attempts, to actively keeping your devices safe with threat protection, ensuring you don't accidentally click a nefarious link to a malicious website, something I've done a lot, NordVPN is just incredibly useful for helping to keep you safe online. I use NordVPN primarily to change my location for streaming services, but it's also a big help to me when making these videos because it means I can more easily access websites that contain sources that are otherwise blocked based on my location for whatever reason. I just click a button, and now I'm online from somewhere entirely different in the world. The link in my description, nordvpn.com slash Alderhill, will give you a massive discount of four months free on a two-year plan, and clicking it helps to support the channel as well. The best part is that they have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you aren't happy with your decision, it's super easy to just get your money back. Thanks so much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. <sighs> Here I am back in good old Blighty. Oh, thank goodness. G'day, mate. I clicked the wrong country, didn't I? Starting off with the infantry, as always, the current design looks super historical. It seems like they've really done their research, and at first glance, it seems like I have nothing to do, right? Well, there are still some fundamental problems. For starters, there is a support company of heavy artillery. And if you just looked at the sources, you would immediately think that that's correct, but actually, the heavy artillery is a 150 millimeter battery of 12 guns. This is actually represented in game by the medium artillery battalion that's already here. Because if you look at our artillery research, the medium artillery is in fact the 150 mil, or 15 centimeter, same diff. So there was actually no heavy artillery, so we'll replace that. The next fundamental problem is the anti-tank. It is correct that there was an anti-tank battalion which contained exactly 24 pieces of anti-tank, so great. However, it was actually motorized. Yes, that's right. If you look at the design, you can clearly see the little wheels that denote it being a motorized battalion. So out of all of the rest of this, where not really anything is motorized except for the hospital and some of the logistics, the anti-tank is entirely motorized. This is most likely because anti-tank is very heavy and it's important to be able to move it around when necessary to fire it at specific targets, especially because anti-tank tends to be more on the front lines than backup artillery. But it's still weird. So we'll just change this over to motorized anti-tank and move on with our lives. And finally, there was actually a signal detachment that was presumably not motorized. And I'm really glad I get to add this because it increases my organization. Because look at this division. Look how low its org is. In base game, every division needs to have a minimum of 30 org or you might as well just bin it. This has 17. It's because it's packed with artillery. I do not like these green eggs and ham. A big reason why the org is so low is Black Ice makes each individual artillery battery only 12 artillery, whereas in base game, an artillery battalion is actually 36 artillery. Black Ice does it a lot more historically accurate because this is the accurate number of artillery pieces per battalion, but it still tanks my org. So I think this is a big reason why I'm going to struggle. Next up is the tanks. This one is very difficult. The sources I've found state that there are around 300 total tanks per division, as well as 24 pieces of field artillery. And so far, the current design is pretty accurate for that. Also, fun fact, quite a lot of these artillery pieces were supposed to actually be towed by half-tracks, but they, they weren't. Y you know they weren't. They had trucks. There was also almost certainly not a field hospital detachment, but there were signals, so we can make an easy replacement there. But we also need to think about the medium tanks. Of the 300 tanks, about a third to a half of them were supposed to be some combination of Panzer 3s and 4s. And Black Ice breaks this down into mediums and medium CSs, so we will add one of each to the division. And there'll be another couple changes in a little bit as well, but so far this is accurate. The motorized regiment within it is also completely correct. It had a motorcycle battalion, which just seems really weird to me. And finally, it's the motorized boys, and we start with a half motorized division. And I can't really find sources to demonstrate that this existed, and I don't even really know what half motorized boys are. All the sources I found say that the motorized divisions of 1939 into 1940 were actually identical to the infantry divisions, it's just that every element of it was motorized. They were obviously changed quite substantially after the war in Poland, 
but this is what they look like at the start of the war, so very easy replacement. All these changes mean that my logistical supply is bad. I'm obviously very low on tanks, but also recon equipment and radios and light vehicles. And you need a lot of light vehicles in this mod. I am not prepared. Something I've only just realized is all the little resource bars in the top left of my screen. They are actually backup resource storage and I can actually utilize those resources when I go to war if I lose access to imports later on. So I actually have 1500 rubber saved up. This is amazing. I don't really need to worry about losing out on rubber. Oh god, I just did the complete noob trap. I just changed over the Panzer 3 and 4A to the E and D respectively, and now I lost half of my production efficiency. That is such a huge penalty. I guess I should have started new production lines, I guess. We've also now annexed Czechoslovakia and set up a little puppet in Slovakia because that's the historical option, which then automatically gives us the Panzer 38T, which is the, the Czech tank. Oh my god, look at all the stuff that's in the Czech lands in like Prague. There's so many factories and little engine refinery things. Oh, why was I building these? I didn't know I was going to get them. Alright, I have made a huge mistake. I completely forgot about the fact that I was going to gain all of the Czech's equipment Look how many tens of thousands of Czech field uniforms I have, and guns, and garrison equipment. Just a whole bunch of stuff that I've been massively investing in because I thought I had huge shortages of. I'm so stupid. I could have had this all along. Yes, my soldiers are all going to be dressed up like Czechs, but I don't care. Now I can put my factories into planes and tanks, which I should have been doing the entire time. Oh, and also I need to make one change to the tank division that I just made. I need to replace one of the light tanks with a cavalry tank, because that is what the Panzer 35T represents. And this is because there were a whole bunch of 35Ts in the Panzer divisions. In fact, there were actually way more than the listed strengths ever said. There were supposed to be way more Panzer 2s and 3s, but they just didn't have any. So they used a whole bunch of captured Czech tanks. I'm also starting to build the West Wall, which in this mod is actually a series of decisions after a focus that adds forts over time. I desperately need this because I'm really scared about the French. In this mod, you also need to mobilize your army away from just a standing army, and it takes time to move up each step, but I have a focus that instantly moves me to the big one with no malices whatsoever. Seriously, just using a standing army gives you minus 50% attack. We can also now do solution for Danzig, but I have a little bit more time to do some focuses. So I'm just trying to time it exactly right so I start the conflict at the exact right time. Yeah, look at that. We can go to general mobilization, a whole bunch of bonuses. Very nice. All right, it is now September 1939. It is time for the conflict, and this is my little setup. I have an entire field marshal's worth of units on the Polish border. On the East Prussian border, I have 24 more, because remember, for some reason, all the general sizes are reduced by half in this mod. And I've got a bit of a ragtag medley of boys on the west wall, hoping to not lose any territory against the French. I'm just really scared. And I've also got two panzer forces, not, not a ton of panzers, like four each, as well as a couple of the motorized, to quickly push in and try to knock out some encirclements. Plane-wise, I do not have a lot. I have like a few hundred fighters and bombers. I'm not pleased with this, but I'm doing the best that I can. And I've also just started to get mechs, uh, which I will need in 1940. So we're going to kind of put as many factories as possible into them so that we can actually get them out. And now it is time for the fight. We're going to start the attack. The Kingdom of Nepal is the first person to join the war. Not really sure about that one, but okay. And it's going pretty well. Our attack stats are not that bad. Probably because Poland is like on standing army. But we're, we're grinding through them. I'm actually a little surprised. Okay, yeah, this is a very historical attack in Poland. We've utterly encircled the northern front. We're crushing into Warsaw and pushing into the east. And here's the partitioning of Poland. We won. That was honestly super accurate. Even the casualties. I only lost 14,000 and the Polish lost 400,000. Hey, I beat history. Germany in real life lost like 50,000 casualties in this conflict. Oh my god, look how much equipment I got from Poland. Why did I invest so much in all this regular stuff? I should have been specializing in tanks and planes. Look at this historicity, by the way. The French are actually attacking me in the West Wall and are probably going to take Saar. This is what happened in the Saar Offensive. They took a teeny little bit of territory, but I don't care. Let's move up north into Denmark, where they instantly surrender. And I also completely forgot about Norway and how I need to plan an invasion. I can't really use marines because there just weren't really marine divisions at this time. They were instead like individual marine battalions. So I will invade with regular infantry divisions 
And because of the current naval invasion tech, I can only invade with two divisions at a time. But it's okay, I have a backup plan. I'm gonna make some Fallschirmjägers. And based on my sources, this is an accurate Fallschirmjäger division, excepting the fact that I'm not allowed to use the artillery that I would put in here. Because for some reason in Hoi, if you add artillery to a parachute division, it can no longer jump. So... I'm screwed. The Falschmanikers will just be a whole bunch of parachute boys, and we're gonna see if we can figure out a way to attack into Oslo or try to get into a port somehow. Also, holy crap, I've been begging in the Discord while I've been playing, asking them to tell me how to fix the damn NATO symbols for the German army. Someone finally helped me! I have to go up here to the division, click this little symbol, and use default symbol. There we go, I now can actually see what the hell these divisions actually are. It's amazing. Right, the invasion of Norway, it's its not going great. Uh, I really struggle to get the air superiority necessary to launch the Falschmjägers, so the attacks don't line up properly. The parachutes just land on Oslo and uh, they die. They, they die. So the marines, well, the pseudo-marines that are attacking also die and fail. Uh, that didn't... That didn't go so well. <laughs> it's okay, let's let's go around Maginot and start to attack into the Netherlands and Belgium. I've got all my planes ready, I've got big armies in the Dutch, on the Belgians, and we'll just grind right in. My hope is to try and get some Dunkirks and encirclements, but oh my god, I have not built enough planes. There are so many allied planes here, I cannot even begin to describe the amount of hell I'm experiencing. I Planes are just getting shot down. Belgium and the Netherlands have pretty much collapsed almost instantaneously, but the problem is the French and British resistance is surprisingly strong. I've encircled the Belgians and I'm just trying to grind through. I think this was a mistake. I don't think Guderian's strategy worked quite well here because they have a lot of boys and I don't have the supply. So I think it's time to go back to making a pretty regular frontline advance, trying to do targeted tank pushes. And I even got to do a little bit of a Dunkirk onto the Brits, isn't that nice? It's just, oh, it's a little tricky. There's a lot of divisions here and the sheer number of planes they have is really slowing me down. Also, oh my god, the Brits have actually naval invaded me in the Netherlands. I did not expect this, but it's okay. I kept a few divisions in reserve. We're gonna just rush in there with a couple tanks and crush them. The assault into France is taking a little while. We've taken Paris, which is nice. And historically, they pretty much surrendered very quickly after the fall of Paris, but we're pushing nice and deep. Though our manpower is really bad, so I'm gonna go up the service age to 18 to 40. This gives me an extra like 0.6% recruitable pop. It hurts my stability, yes, and makes my divisions a little bit worse, but I think it's necessary. I'm pushing a bit too aggressively, this is the problem. But France is now done, we got a whole bunch of equipment from them. We'll establish Vichy France and be nice and historical. Ah, uh, mm. Okay, I'm an idiot. I have only just noticed that the standard garrison template for all of my occupied territories was the normal infantry division. I have been yeeting artillery and handheld AT and radios into garrison units. I should have changed this to just a regular suppression template or something. This is so painful. Why did this happen? Why is this the default? Since it is now May 1940 and France has now fallen, we can start thinking about the changes that occurred in 1940. For starters, the tank division had their recon battalion changed to an armored recon and i can't make that because that's actually just tankette recon and i don't have tankette so i'll just do armored cars the motorized also changed the wehrmacht thought that the motorized divisions were just too chunky and they chewed up supply way too much so you know what they did they stripped an entire regiment from it so now, the motorized infantry divisions are only six battalions of infantry. It's so terrible. Look at that crappy organization. But this is what they did, so I gotta do it. Well, now it's just all about preparing for Barbarossa. There's no chance I'm gonna try and fight the Brits at sea. We're just gonna build up divisions, start to build a collab government on the Soviets. Very optimistic, I know, and just get ready. We also actually get a bunch of really nice bonuses from the Soviets, including Soviet raw materials to help our factory output. So that's cool. And I think we should use that good news to plan a brand new invasion into Norway. We're going to attack the Christiansand port in the southwest instead this time, and I'm going to spread out the paratroopers so it's not so terrible. And this time it works! Yes, the paratroopers have landed. We've taken the port. Yeet over a bunch of divisions, tanks, and infantry. Let's go! Also, this is really fun. I have created the Atlantic Wall. I've recruited a whole bunch of these Wachtruppen divisions, which have just a militia and a garrison battalion in them and nothing else. And I put one on every single coastal tile. 
this would be pretty accurate to what the actual Atlantic Wall was. Obviously, it has some fortifications later and some reserve troops in central supply hubs, but for now, I think this is pretty cool, and it frees up the divisions that I put there. Norway's going really nicely, and we've been able to buy the resource rights to southern Romania. Look at those resources, baby. Our oil problems are solved. Our manpower is still really low, so you know what we gotta do? We gotta add women. Let's go, get in the factories. Also, it's finally 1941, so let's make the 1941 divisions. Let's change that name. The main thing that happened to the Panzers was they got shrunk. Don't worry, the motorcycle battalion stayed, and we gained two mechanized infantry battalions and lost one motorized. And of course, you gotta add a whole motorized medium artillery to it, because what do you need? More artillery in my tank divisions. You know what else? I think we got too many tanks. Why don't we reduce them? Let's take out a whole bunch of tank battalions. There's only goddamn 160 tanks in our tank division. There's more pieces of artillery than there are damned actual tanks. I think this is an accurate representation of what it would look like. Medium, medium CS, light, and the cavalry tank for the 3080s. I do not like this division. The big change, though, is in the infantry divisions. They were really worried about manpower at this time, so incrementally, over the next few years, what the Wehrmacht did is they reduced the manpower in each division. And the only way I can do that is by removing battalions. So every year, I will remove one infantry battalion from this division to more accurately represent the total manpower quantity. One kind of annoying thing is that most representations of the infantry division of this time have the division gaining a 88mm anti-air flak gun as like a support company, but I can find zero evidence for that. Instead, they just had the regular 20mm AA support companies, which is really boring. Finally, the motorized infantry gained a motorcycle battalion, as well as the motorized anti-air, again, 20 mil. I really hate these changes, but in the very least, it does give us a lot more manpower back that we can use to make new divisions. Also, keeping up the iterations of the different Panzer tanks, like the Panzer 3E and stuff, with the change to a torsion bar suspension, I think, and the Panzer IV just kind of getting a little bit more armor. Also got to think about Yugoslavia, so I'll send my experienced infantry army and some tanks down there to just sort of crush them. I think it's necessary. Frustratingly, Italy gets almost the entirety of it, and then I have to, like, partition the territory with Hungary, but I can ask for some of it back. It's it's very, very weird. I don't understand it. One thing I totally forgot about, by the way, is to make a Gebet's Jäger division. A mountain division. I've actually really struggled to find any concrete information prior to 1941, because they were much smaller, but at this point I have been able to find some pretty helpful sources. Though the problem is, these sources are the new Niehorster sources, and they've changed the symbols. Look at these things. It is nonsense. This is actually the organizational system that the Wehrmacht used at this time, so I have to learn a new language to be able to decode this. So like, these little symbols here represent battalions, the little triangles underneath mean that they are mountaineers. This one here means an artillery regiment, mountain artillery, that in-game is represented by pack artillery. This little symbol down here represents anti-tank guns, and there's also motorized medium artillery, which is represented by the fact that there are little wheels on the design. I have had to look at these symbols so much, it's pain. Alright, we're gearing up for Barbarossa, and there are actually some lovely bonuses you can get. You can either prepare for the long winter war to get some attritional bonuses and supply stuff, or you can kick in the door and get 20% attack and defense for 90 days. That's the worst option, but it's the one that happened historically, so I will be picking that. Maybe I can get some good encirclements along the way, you know? Alright, here it is, 5am on the 21st of June. Oh, wait, Barbarossa began on the 22nd of June. All right, here it is, 5 a.m. on the 22nd of June. I've got a whole field army of 48 infantry divisions on the northern section, and I've got 36 and another army on the sort of minor section of Romania and Hungary. I've got tanks in three different armies, one pushing north to Skov, another one trying to push straight to Moscow, and another one working towards Kiev for some spicy encirclements. And I've also got two tanks as backup in France in case of any naval invasions. Oh, and I also have 12 divisions, mostly mountains, in Norway just to help pushing and kind of finishing that off. I've got my planes, and boy howdy, there are none. I have very few planes. I massively underproduce this. I am terrified. Let's do it. Let's kick off Barbarossa. We get that bonus for 90 days. And you know what? It's going okay. Lots of green bubbles. The enemy divisions don't even have commanders, which is weird. And now that the war has actually started, there's a variety of really interesting little focuses. We can go down permanent supply lines for railway speed, loot force one to get better equipment capture ratio, which is pretty cool. Oh, we get a malice to infrastructure for every Soviet state we occupy due to the railway gauges being different. That's not so fun. 
Oh, we are immediately losing fuel. Let's uh, build some more refineries. Oh, never mind. I'm so stupid. It turns out when you build refineries, you then have to activate them. I have eight refineries that are doing nothing. I just have to activate them and then they'll all get to work. I'm so stupid. All right, we're only a couple weeks in. We've already hit the Dnieper line. We are moving pretty fast. I'm really trying to work on getting encirclements. And I've already grabbed a couple divisions here and there. And there's a couple very obvious little bits we need to move towards. Yeah, all right, a month in and we've managed to encircle a bit in the top. And we're clearly just about to encircle another ginormous chunk here in the south. Starting to really struggle with just maintaining enough infantry on the front lines, though, because we just weren't able to make many divisions. In Black Ice, you might stretch to make as many divisions, but it feels like the Soviets have an infinite number of them. Oh, nice. They're making a nice little chunky pocket. They're trying to evacuate around Minsk, but I'm just going to keep pushing, see if we can maybe close this off. I got other little bits everywhere. This is hell to organize. All right, we are almost near the end of our 90 day bonus, and this is the situation. We've got ginormous chunks encircled in the south and in the north and the middle. I'm just trying to really quickly finish them off my biggest one oh look at that that little triangle of divisions i don't know how many there are actually in here but it's taking a very long time to destroy them casualty wise it's not so great we've only done 1.2 million to the soviets whereas we've lost a full half million men to them i think i'm pushing too aggressively of my infantry but i was just trying to take advantage of my bonus you know even more encirclements happening so it's pretty good we have had to move up to the expanded draft conscription policy which really tanks our war support and various bonuses but i needed the manpower but we're still very low on the men don't worry though, we can still expand our age brackets to 17 to 50 year olds. I'm sure that'll be fine for our economy. All right, it is now the 1st of January, 1942. This is the situation. We are pushing in the north close to Leningrad, but really struggling to get past the snowy conditions. We have a nice big chunk of encirclement down south that is taking a very long time to annihilate, and a smaller encirclement again to the south that we're just finishing off. But now it's time to make our new divisions. Remember when I was complaining about my manpower? Well, no worries, because we are going to delete another extra infantry battalion from our divisions. That's right, we're going down to only seven to represent the fact that the German army was like, oh god, I need men to throw at the Russians. The Panzers, though, underwent quite a lot of changes. They again changed their mind and went, you know what, we need more tanks in this tank division. So they ended in about 40 to 80 more tanks, depending on the division, and the majority were Panzer 3s that were added, so we will represent that by adding a medium tank battalion. And the motorcycle battalion was completely removed as well. I guess they decided, you know what? Motorcycles, kind of cringe. The other significant change is finally they get dedicated anti-air support in the form of 88mm. This was towed, supposedly half-track towed, but I bet you they didn't have enough. So we can finally add that to the support companies. And the motorized boys also had some weirdness. They gained a tank battalion. Because yeah, our motorized guys need tanks sure again mostly panzer threes so we will just add a medium tank battalion but they also gained a little detachment of spatgs which are essentially marder twos these are basically dedicated superstructured light tanks with a big anti-tank gun on them to help provide more dedicated and mobile and armored anti-tank support however I wasn't able to figure out the damn research necessary to be able to build them in this mod. It requires like a dozen different bits of tech that I didn't know about and it didn't tell me. So I'm still catching up to that and figuring it out. So when I finally figure it out, I will indeed begin to build those. Also, though it pains me, I am indeed going to go up to the 17 to 50 bracket because we are almost entirely out of manpower. I've been pushing too aggressively. It's it's very painful. My big hope is to finish off these little pockets and hope that this will give us enough power to be able to fight back and, I don't know, try and push? Oh god, the Soviets have actually pushed around Finland and are coming into Norway. This is terrifying. It's okay, I've got some mountain divisions nearby. Uh, no more garrisoning. Just go up there and try to stop them. I still can't get the damn Martyr 2. The texts are just not quite right. And the problem is so many of the texts share the same name. 75 centimeter KWK40. There's like three texts with like almost the same name. Are right, you finally deleted the little encirclement over here. No. Oh, come on. We've been pushed back in the north along the Corland pocket. What's happening? I'll tell you what. Let's look at this. We have a little bit of a Soviet pocket here. This kind of looks like the Kursk bulge. What if I get some tanks in the north and south of it and maybe try to encircle and push them? I think that could go really well. Also, manpower is still a real problem. I'm not even doing general assaults and I'm running out. We're going to 17 to 55. The big problem is the complete lack of organization in our divisions, so our boys just die. But it's okay. I finally got the 7.5 centimeter KWK40, which means I can at last build the Martyr. Let's get a couple of these out. Oh, look at that. It's got the 75 millimeter pack 40 gun. It's got the leaf spring suspension. It's beautiful. 
Let's build like six of these before we explode. Okay, look at this. We get some Luftwaffe field divisions as a part of a focus. They're very crappy, but hey, they can use the bolster the line. Okay, I'm actually genuinely very scared. We have been pushed back pretty considerably. We never even made it to Stalingrad. Oh, oh, we've lost everything. I think, am I going to have to pull back? I think I'm going to need to pull back right now. Let's move the Southern Army onto like the, the big river lines near Romania. And I don't know, let's, let's start thinking about how we can form a new line near Warsaw. The big issue is the amount of infantry they have in their divisions. I've got only six battalions or something at this point, or seven. The Soviets have tons, so they have way more org than me. Even if my divisions were better, they can last longer. The same thing is happening to the tanks, man. The tank divisions are just so weak. If I had the opportunity and the choice, I would remove practically all of the artillery. Maybe keep one, replace it with like a self-propelled artillery gun, and also put more mech in this because the, the organization is just so bad, but I can't. I'm doing it historically and I'm suffering. Oh, oh, there's a huge breakthrough from the Soviets. I think I just got to pull back. I'm going to start to build like forts on the Warsaw Vistula River. It's actually a pillbox defense first and then forts after that in this mod. So let's just keep falling back. Maybe we can find a new position to push from. I, I, I don't know. I'm also deeply distressed. I was supposed to do this. The Sport Palace speech. I'm so stupid. If I had enough war support and also it was around this time, I would have got a huge bunch of bonuses of stability and war support and gone to total mobilization for free and got extensive draft policy. This would have been so good. Oh, it would have been free as well to say PP. It's, the problem is I'm just suffering a huge amount. Like North Africa's being invaded. Italy has completely failed. I cannot help them. I am quite literally incapable of providing assistance. It is now January 1943 and look at this. We've fallen back to the Vistula. We are weak as hell. We have to make the further changes as usual. Another infantry battalion goes bye-bye. So my infantry gets worse just when I need them to get strong, which is very unpleasant. And our tank divisions also do something a little weird. They actually do gain a light tank destroyer, the Martyr II, but alongside that they lost their cavalry tanks, mostly the Panzer 38T, so we'll remove them and replace them with regular medium tanks and medium CS tanks, so that's kind of what this looks like. We also need to make a new type of division, the Volkssturm Division or the Volksgrenadier, I find conflicting names, but basically these were assault divisions, and they were identical to regular infantry divisions, but they had assault infantry instead which meant that they were given a much larger quantity of things like SMGs, the like MP38s. If I were playing normally, I would probably have done this quite a few years ago to represent the gradual inclusion of submachine guns, but I have to do this historical based on my data, and this is the data I found. I'm going to make these divisions and then convert like a quarter to a third of my army to them to represent that change, but it's not going to help me. And finally, the Panzer Grenadier Division has some concrete data for this year, and it's essentially a motorized division at current use, but with mechs instead, and 72 assault guns, which I don't really have. I have some light tank destroyers, but I can make the artillery. There's just too much tech. It completely locks it behind so many techs that I just wasn't able to get it done. But this is basically what it would look like. Our divisions are massively suffering on the defense, and a big reason for this is because we have almost no entrenchment. Look at this. It would appear that I went the completely wrong defensive doctrine. It's like 7 or 10, depending on the division and where they are. It's, it's so bad. If I'd gone defense in depth, I'd have way more entrenching, and I would actually be able to hold. I've made some mistakes, guys. Oh god, I'm so stupid. Going down the Hitler Youth would have given me an entire research tree dedicated to doctrine. I could have been making this the whole time. <laughs> if you're wondering at all what I would prefer my infantry divisions to look like, I would say I would prefer them like this. A 9-3 with one of the three artillery being an anti-tank and a heavy artillery support company. This would actually give me a ton of defense, decent organization, and I would actually be able to hold while my tanks push, but nope. We can at least case Anton and take back Vichy France, maybe getting some more factories. Oh, I'm scared. Look at this, there's so many boys close to Berlin. I'm gonna have to pull off the entirety of the Atlantic wall just to try to contain the Soviets. This is absolutely horrifying. They are right on me. Go boys, just stand in Germania and defend. I also can't take any of the really cool focuses that form the Volkstrum or give me emergency gun provisions and free equipment because I hadn't done the Sportplatz speech and now I'm locked away from it because I don't have enough war support. It's so frustrating, I don't get to make the Volkstrum. If I was to make the Volkstrum, I probably would have done something like this and just converted a regular infantry division to militia and took out most of the artillery because they were basically just nothing divisions. <laughs> but hey, it would have been something to put on the line.
We're gonna hit desperate defense just to try and stay alive, but honestly, it's not looking good. I don't think there's anything I can do at this point. They are pushing me very hev- Oh! Oh! I guess Berlin was taken. I didn't- uh, That's it! I'm dead! Oh my god, we instantly died as soon as Berlin was taken. What the hell? I tried so hard, but that's it. I, I just couldn't survive. We've been defeated by the Soviets. The Allies never even got a look in. I think my biggest mistake was not investing heavily enough into planes and for over-relying on infantry to fill in gaps and pushing with them far too much, depleting me of most of my manpower. I also really overbuilt on refineries because I've been sitting at near full fuel the entirety of the game. It's just that I didn't realize I had to enable the refineries so I didn't see their output. All of that construction power could have been going to military factories to get me more equipment. <laughs> There's just so much to keep in mind in this mod, it's crazy. But that's it. This has been the Great Historical Black Ice video. It is easily the most difficult and painful historical design video I've ever done. If you do like this video, I'd love it if you left me a like and a comment down below. And let me know if you want to see more Black Ice on the channel. Maybe a follow-up video where I do the same as the Soviets historical. But maybe this time, don't explode and die? Question mark. Thank you so very much for watching. I was Alger Hill and I'll continue to be... Black Ice has defeated me. Bye bye I did it. <laughs> Do your best at that. <laughs> Good luck.